Hello chess enthusiasts, my name is Miha and welcome to my chess rhythm YouTube channel. So another interesting game from the recently ended TP Sigmund round robin tournament from Sweden. Peter Swidler won by the way and let's go to the fourth round duel between Arjun Erigaisi and Domarajo Gukes, better known as Gukes D. Let's see what happened. Arjun Erigaisi had white pieces and he started with e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop to b5, knight f6 and we have Berlin defense of Spanish game. Now d3, bishop to c5, white castles king side, knight jumps on d4. Pretty much standard moves. Knight captures, bishop recaptures, c3, driving the bishop away. Bishop goes back to b6. Now bishop goes back to a4, and now uh, black castles king side. Bishop to g5, pinning the knight on f6, and now black plays h6, attacking the bishop. White can capture the knight or not, and white has decided to retreat the bishop to h4. Now d6, h3, preventing any bishop or knight to uh, g4. And now black plays g5, uh, totally unpinning the knight, but at the cost of weakening pawn structure around his king. Bishop goes to g3, c6, preparing maybe d5 at the correct time. Knight goes to d2, bishop to e6, black has ended his development. Now bishop to c2, rook to e8. This bishop on b6 is pinning this pawn on f2 and that is the problem for white because he wants to push f4. But the square is twice protected, so king goes to h1. Well, first white uh, wants to play d4. Let's see, after a random move, a6, then d4, e pawn captures and then f4, uh, demolishing the pawn structure around black king. This could turn up pretty ugly for black. So bishop goes to c7, further defending this e5 square. Now d4, strike in the center, but black keeps the tension and plays uh, b5 action on the queen side. Now a4, a5, rook to e1, and now rook to b8. Further supporting this uh, B pawn, and now A pawn captures on B5. C pawn recaptures, and now Knight goes to F1. Preparing to be deployed at E3, but Black is on the move and follows his original plan. B4 was played. Now White has to be careful if C pawn uh, captures, then Rook recaptures, attacking defenseless pawn on B2, and a double attack on a pawn on D4. So bishop goes to a4, attacking rook on e8, rook goes to f8, rook to c1, b pawn captures on c3, and b pawn recaptures. Well, black has created a pass pawn on the a file, um, maybe a rook to b2, later with queen to b8, with action on the queen side would be a totally solid option. Black, however, plays e pawn captures on d4. So black is releasing the tension in the center, uh, c pawn uh, recaptures naturally, well white now has a very strong center, rook goes to b4, and now white plays d5, attacking the bishop. Bishop doesn't have a lot of uh, good squares, only d7 and uh, c8. If bishop goes to d7, then bishop captures, black can recapture with knight or uh, queen. If knight captures, then queen jumps on h5. If queen captures, then queen f3 attacking the knight. Queen cannot protect it, because after queen d8, then rook captures bishop. And after queen recaptures, queen captures knight. Two pieces are much stronger than the rook in this position. And after bishop to d8, defending the knight, then rook c6, the pawn is going to be captured, bishop to e7 doesn't help, then e5, if the pawn captures, then knight is double attacked, white gains two pieces for a rook again. So in the game, 
bishop to c8 was played. Now queen to c2, double attack on the bishop on c7, black removes the bishop to b6, and now e5, double attack on the pawn and the bishop, well e6 is the threat uh, undermining the defender of the g6 square, because queen definitely wants to jump on g6, so black has no other option but to capture on e5, and this is what happened in the game, bishop recaptures queen to c2, taking over the long diagonal, is the threat. So bishop goes to d4 was played in the game, bishop captures, rook recaptures, bishop goes to b3, defending pawn on d5, which is three times attacked actually, so knight captures on d5. Well, black is a pawn up, but the pawn structure around his king is very bad, and white can use that. One of the options is uh, rook from c to d1, which is quite unpleasant. Rook cannot capture because uh, rook recaptures and it's pin. And if knight goes to f4, then bishop to f7 is a tricky move. King cannot capture because uh, after king captures, then queen to h7. King f6 is the only move, uh, rook captures rook, queen recaptures, and queen to e7, double attack on the king and the rook, gaining advantage. So here in this position, rook would have to capture, then rook captures on d4, queen recaptures, queen recaptures uh, bishop, and the position is uh, rather equal. In the game, queen to c6 was played, targeting this uh, pawn on h6, but black doesn't bother to defend it, knight goes to f4, queen captures on h6, now let's take a look at this position in detail, black is indeed in difficult position, g pawn is, uh, g5 pawn is at stake, only protected by the queen, and ev every uh, black piece literally defends something, if rook abandons the third rank, let's say rook to d3, then rook captures on uh, c8, queen recaptures and queen g5 check. Even after king h7, queen f4, uh, rook captures on b3, then rook e5. Black is left in the open, white threatens with making a couple of moves. I cannot go through all the variation, but white is winning here. Okay, let's go back to our game. You might think that here with uh, rook d6, black can trap the queen. All squares are taken, that's true, but uh, here white responds with bishop to f7 check. King cannot capture because uh, if king captures, then rook c7 check. If king g8, then queen g7 checkmate. If queen captures on c7, then queen h7 skewering the king, grabbing the queen. So, king, so here black has to uh, capture with rook, and then rook captures on c8. If rook captures queen, rook captures queen. If queen captures rook, then uh, queen captures rook. White is a pawn up and a little bit better. Okay, let's go back to our game. Black had a move at his disposal to solve his problems, and that was bishop captures on h3. If bishop captures on h3, white cannot uh, capture with g pawn, because then uh, rook to d6 is possible. Of course, white can try with uh, bishop to f7, rook f7, rook c8, queen captures rook, queen captures rook, and then uh, queen h3 is going to be made in the next move. So here in this position, white would have to play rook e5. Uh, rook g5 is a deadly threat, but after bishop to g2, king g1, uh, knight h3 is check, and uh, g pawn is also protected. King captures bishop on g2, rook to h4, driving a queen away. Black is up uh, on down, but after, let's say, queen uh, c6, knight f4 check, uh, king cannot go out on f3, 
because after a king to f3, queen d3, check, rook to e3 is the only defending uh, move, uh, and then queen to f4, rook to uh, h3 is going to be checkmate in a couple of moves. So here, so here king has to go to g1, knight to h3, king g2, knight f4, and we have perpetual check. Okay, let's go back to our game. Bishop to c2 with queen h7 uh, threat is also disturbing, so uh, in the game black plays bishop to f5, closing the diagonal. Now rook goes to c6. Um, again, black would equalize with knight h3. In this case, if g-pawn captures, then rook h4 attacking the queen. Queen to d6. Now black can trade queen. And then rook h3. King g1. Rook captures bishop on b3. But then rook e5. Uh, white is going to grab this a-pawn. Uh, Black would be a pawn up, but it's not likely that he would uh, be able to convert the advantage. In the game, black plays rook to d3, attacking the bishop on b3, but that was a fatal blunder. White responds with rook e5, counterattacking bishop on f5. Well, if black removes the bishop, then this vital pawn on g5 would be double attacked. So rook captures on b3 was played, rook captures on f5, a g5 uh, pawn is going to be captured. Of course, black can defend with knight e6, but then knight goes to g3, then to h5 and f6, and it's going to be made or decisive material loss for black. So in the game, f6 was played, defending pawn on g5, and yeah, you can imagine what happened. Rook captures on uh, knight on f4. G pawn recaptures, queen to g6 check, king goes to h8, the only uh, square, and now rook to c5, threatening rook to h5 checkmate. There isn't much to be done here. Queen to d1 prevents uh, immediate checkmate, but loses decisive material. And after f5, then uh, queen h6, king g8, uh, queen e6, white gains the rook and decisive material again. Anyway, in this position, Gukesh D had enough and resigned the game. So I hope you like this game, I hope you have learned something from it. If you have any questions, my email is below in the description. Of course, I invite you to visit my Instagram page. That's it for now and see you soon.